Ron and Fez, XM202. I don't know what's happening, but Earl just threw his stuff and is screaming right now. He is just screaming at Dave. I could hear it through the soundproof stuff. Yeah, there's two uh, and thick Dave, panes of glass. Dave hasn't even looked over at him. It was... Um, from Seinfeld, it was like Coco. Remember when uh, George was so crazy he couldn't deal? Look at Coco going at it. Earl, what happened in there, buddy? He, I don't think he's grasped the idea that there's a show going on. Right. And he's screaming at me, hit the song, hit the song. I'm like, I'm like, and I'm like don't disturb the flow of the show. Our Master Poe has to go in and stand between those guys now. All right, here comes Dave. Very Dave has been sent out of the room by Master Poe. All right, hold on. Nobody's asking you to talk. Master Poe, thank you for being on top of this because it's always helpful to know that these guys can't hurt each other. What is happening? The phones have been going off and on, off and on, the entire show from, from minute eight, and he will not play the fucking song Mars even asked me, play the song. Why yeah. aren't you playing the song? He's afraid because he no, thinks... No, I'm not afraid. You, I he, see a full he phone, guys, baby. He thinks you guys are going to take it out on him. No, I see a fucking phone. For some fucking pussy-ass reason. No, I hear you answering I keep the phone. getting fucking stares and saying, Dave, wake up I, with the fucking phones. I'm hearing you answer the phones. the phones are going phone. off and on. <laughs> I hear you answering the minutes. phone. So I look like the fucking ago. dickhead when you can't fucking play a song because you fe think Ron Fez are going to get mad at you. They know it's not your fault. Play the fucking song. Why did we just play American Idol music? Because I'm, I'm upset now because he's but saying so play, the, play, the, song and I, he's saying play the song and I see a full phone bank of phones. What's that? You know, they just fucking came back on. That's the point. They keep going off, Earl, and then coming back wait, in. So why am I, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. So why am I going to hit the song that the phones are blowing out when there's a full phone bank of no, phones? No, Earl. the phones just popped that because you could Explain have, that craziness to me. Shush. You could have played it when they went off, and then they come all back in at one time, the and, Ron says, <laughs> and then Ron says, why are you not... Fucking, uh, uh, why are the names not up there? The names aren't up there because you, they blew out. Ron doesn't realize that because you won't play the fucking song! <laughs> what happened? Because the second I hit the, you know what? Here, fine, here, here we play go, here we go, here we go. We've all, wait. Oh my god. There goes, there goes, we can't stop Every the song. fucking time they get something good going, the motherfucking telephones keep All right, Master Poe is back keeping an eye on Earl. Earl just chucked his headphones hard. <laughs> Earl. I don't bring equipment. Yeah. You can say that about me. Yeah, Earl, what is, is he driving you over He's the He's driving edge? me fucking crazy. <laughs> he drives me the fuck crazy. What happens, though? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to tell you this, but Fez and I are the ones doing the show. You don't see us yelling at each other like this. I, he, he hasn't grasped the fact that, you know what? There's a show going on! What? <laughs> Run! Did you There's a show going on. I have to pay attention. Out, play the song. I'm actually getting people. Mars says, helps me out. Help me out, Dave. Play the song. Earl, you know I can't hear Dave when he's screaming. People are saying, play the song when they go out. If they always go out, right, and you don't play the song, Ron Fez have no idea. Or just tell, I said don't even play the song. I said at least tell Fez in his fucking headphones. There's there there's a talk back button so you can tell Fez these run things. Run the show, Dave. You're afraid to do Dave, that. Dave, run the show. Why would you Run the do show, that? Dave. Run what? the show. Fine. Come on, run the show. Go ahead. It's not up, wait, it's not up to you guys who runs things back there. It's up to us and Wicked. No, he doesn't grasp the fact and that you know what? I always take the bullets for that freaking mutt. I always yeah, do. That's true. That I, part's I always take do. a fucking shitload of bullets from you. I can say shit that I will not say on the air. Why not? Oh, what are you no. Of? No, what are you I will say of? shit that will fucking blow your mind away, and I wouldn't do that to you, Earl. What? I will not oh, do I gotta know that. No, I'm not what going is, to. What I'm not going Earl to. No, I'm going to be a stand-up person. Is it person. something to make me and Fez furious? Uh, is I don't he bad know. mouthing us? No, it would not, never be talking it back. I just know little routines and little work things that, you know, are blown out of proportion and little things that I know about Earl that I will not say. I What's will not he talking disclose. about, Earl? I, have I will no not idea. disclose. Apparently, he's got something on you. I've got four or five things on, on you that I could be corroborated with Bill, by Bill the intern. Um, I'm not going to. What? Just trying to book guests? Doing no, production, it's not, it's doing not, best of. Earl, you do a great uh, job, bro. Earl, I'm staying That's with three. you. Earl, I'm That's staying with you. I'm not going to disclose it on the air. Don't fucking try and but make I mean, me disclose But I mean, just it. by bringing it up. 
I'm, I'm not going to say it. On, that on would the be air, like huh? me going, oh, I got a story about something that happened in Fez's pants, but I'm not going <laughs> to say what it is. He doesn't listen. Who doesn't he, listen, Earl? He, he, oh, you tell me I don't listen? Let, let's get started on... Oh, let, let's get down to brass acts on who doesn't listen. Go ahead, say Ready, it. fucking shoot, aim, Dave McDonald, telling me I don't listen. Let's not use real last names. You should aim before you shoot. <laughs> no listening Earl Douglas over there. Uh, Old Man River. Fucking turning 36. All right. White people are so scared of black I won't put up with racism. He, Ron, if, if you right, question Earl, him. Earl, did you get hotlined on this? For screaming too loud? Yes. What happened? Who's calling? D.C.? No, I lost my temper. That's yeah. All. But the, you are known. You're breaking <laughs> equipment again. And you're throwing stuff. Remember, you're already at 30 days in the hole. He, he he only knows how to burst, and I I mentioned this, and then he starts escalating. It's no, because attack. you don't listen, Dave. Dave, you don't listen. It's you do not attack. listen. You just don't. It's Is always the attack. He you always do not attacking listen. Him. The other day, we had a little problem with our prep sheets. Uh huh. And it was because Earl said, you know, tomorrow we're going to have this de guest in. Right. This is kind of technical shit. But basically, yeah, real technical. It, 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 it was on Friday that the guest was, was, uh, uh, thing was coming in. You were confused. You thought you said, uh, I thought we had a guest in today, Earl. And the way he wrote the prep sheet, and Fez, you remember this, was confusing. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know what he sends out, like, uh, today is Thursday. Right. He sends out the Thursday prep sheet on Wednesday. So if it says tomorrow, he means Friday, mm -hmm. but it looks like it's Thursday. I understand. I bring so we fixed that, didn't I we? We're supposed to read it on Friday. Uh, we're right. supposed to read it on Thursday. On the day that it's meant for. But yeah. A lot of people read it, their prep sheet when they get it on Wednesday. Yeah, but there's only four of us, so it's not a lot of people. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I don't remember being freaked out over a guest not I, coming. I wasn't coming freaked in. I mean, out myself. Now, I mean, I, I, here, let me explain this. Fez and I are doing a little show, right? Right. And while this show is going on, and we're conversing back and forth with each other, we're trying to be interesting and amusing, and then we try to talk to the uh, callers and make it interesting and amusing for them. Yes. But I look through that glass, and I see a whole nother show. I see a guy screaming, jumping up and down, going crazy. And you've got all this pent up anger. Wouldn't it normally be that the people at the focus of the show would be feeling that stress? Yeah, no, I, I not on the outer parts. I was saying, I said to him while he was jumping around like an animal. I was saying, Earl, all right, first I mean, of all, you no. gotta get this, all right? White people are so scared. I was saying, he's a human. He's I was, a human. I, I was Can saying, we agree to that? I was saying, Earl, he's a human, yes, much like you. I, I agree that he's you a human. You and your uh, Celtic background. He's a human, right? I, I was saying, Earl, relax. Okay, get back on the show, and he kept going, and I'm like, I can't believe you're losing this much control. Get back, but just to get back to the prep sheet, here's why I'm. Upset. Okay. No, no, no. This is the point. I brought this up to Earl weeks in advance. I said, Earl, you know, it's confusing. Earl, one of these days they're going to be confused. Oh, Earl, he's all defensive. Dave, it's the way it is. It's the way it is. Then Fez tells him to change the, the uh, prep sheet exactly the way I said, Earl, maybe you should consider changing the prep sheet. The, and the very next day, Earl never, uh, Earl changed the prep sheet the exact same way. What I'm saying is he never listens to my ideas or he doesn't think anything of me. I stopped listening to you five seconds ago. Right, I got to well, tell you the truth. What? I don't know what you're rambling about. I know we have a guest here. And you're in here with your pants down screaming. <laughs> Master Paul, just let me say thanks to you for being on the job here. I know you're staying a little extra because of the madness that takes place in that room. The pleasure's all mine, guys. Absolute madness. Sure. Here's what I need you to do. Whenever they raise their voices back there, start kicking and punching until they're unconscious. I could do that. That's the only thing that I can come up with, Fez. That'll stop the yelling. All and right. also thanks to Martini Steve, who was in there on his cell phone with DC and trying to talk Earl off the ledge again. Everybody wants to save Earl's job. And Earl... No matter what happens, this is the important part, you can't throw headphones. You can't get physical. They're expensive. Well, not even that. Suppose it bounces, hits somebody, whatever. No, oh, I'm then sorry. I thought I, yeah, usually I just flip them off and let them dangle off my pack. I But understand. I didn't realize that they completely No, you went crazy. We all them. saw you go physically crazy again. And on the street, it doesn't matter. This is a corporate place, and the corporate people worry about that. Because you got interns in there, you can't be throwing shit. All right? All right, I'm sorry. Uh, it I'm doesn't matter sorry. to me. I'm trying to save your gig. That's why they call. That's what they They don't care that you guys are screaming at each no, other. No, but, but that's, what, that's the part that Dave never understands. At the end of the day, I'm the one that takes the bullet. That's, that's why he gets away with half the shit he gets away with. Because he knows he's not going to pay any penalty for it. 
I don't even know what that means. You're speaking in riddles. He's I'm saying speaking this. in riddles. He's talking out of your ass. Talking talking about shit. Yes, that's you have what you're doing. No that's exactly about. what you're doing. Yes, riddles talking out of your ass. You're right. You just did that. You make no sense. By the early, it's not a one way fucking street. I've taken a lot of shit for, for for you that you don't even realize. And like I said, I'm not going to disclose anything that I know about you. Then you don't have a case. Thank you, Fez. Oh, I'll, I'll mention this off the air to the hosts if they really want me to. Uh, only on air. I want everything to happen on air or not at all. I, I wanted to go on with this because I was going to set up our next guest and we were going to be talking about the uh, devil. A lot of people wanted to explain the physical devil to us, Fez. So maybe if we could hold some of those calls and uh, we'll come back with a new film opening on 666. Very frightening. The Omen. Directed by John Moore, who's going to be talking with us. John Moore will be in in a moment. It's the Ron Fez Show. Is everything all settled now between you and Earl? Uh, I don't think so. You want to go back later and listen to how bad that screaming got and how weird it was, particularly when we had the uh, the director of uh, The Omen standing outside? Yep. Uh, that wasn't good. You want to see hell, buddy? Watch our life. Watch what goes on with, in this room for three hours. And when Earl would just hit the phone blowing up song from Paranoid, so loud that none of us could talk and walk away from it. Do you remember when you were doing that, Earl? Yeah, because he's like, hit. It, 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 I want to start by saying this whole thing started with him screaming at me. It's just untrue. But what? How did it start? Because he, he said, so, I don't, I'm li of course, I'm listening to the show. Listen to how his voice is right, raised say already. You, I know. But now when we're talking to Earl, you get your chance. You know you just annoy him when you butt in. And you have a tendency to talk over him. And he talks over me. As uh, Let's see. Lunch yesterday, I said the same sentence five fucking times. I just wanted to get my little Mickey Mail stat, stat out there, Earl. Well, and you I had don't even remember this. I don't even know what you're talking about. Of course. I honestly, well, no one, don't know what you're talking Ron, about. No one would remember it because I've never, every time I try to speak sometimes, it's just, it's, call me ghosty. Call me ghosty side Dave. Ghosty, because, let me ask you it's something. It's like I'm not talking. What did you say yesterday that you, you believe uh, Earl doesn't want you to talk? He, it, when I try and speak sometimes, Earl just either ignores or go, moves right on from my thing as if what I said doesn't happen. Yesterday, huh? I, as if what I said, he just ignores my statements. Also, when I try and talk, he just goes right over and just Why goes Why do you care? It's four guys having lunch. Were you aware of this, Earl? Because I know I wasn't. I'm not aware of it. What Mickey it? Mantle stat do you want to be heard on? I'm just disappointed. Like he, 536 home runs was a, a lot of home runs, and now everyone's going to pass him because. So what? Who cares about Mickey Mantle? Well, uh, we were talking about sports. <laughs> I rem I don't remember your Mickey Mantle stat, but I remember Earl uh, speaking over you, interrupting you yesterday during lunch because you did this thing where you like sh you were sitting across from Earl and you like shoved your plate towards Earl's. I did that. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. That was yet another time. I just let tried four guys go out to have lunch together, and you're going to talk over each other. That's the way guys are. It's different from talking over because, Ron, here's the thing. With, so people talk over each other. That's true. But I had the same sentence. No one else talked over. And every single – it was four or five times I tried to get the sentence out, and Earl talked over. Four or five. If people talk over once or twice, but like f on the fifth time, it's like, can I get my – I can't stuff? tell you how dull you are. Ghosty. Now, yesterday afterwards, I t after lunch, I took you out for a beautiful cup of coffee at that uh, planet uh, at Java Girl. That's great. And you seem like you're in a good mood. Now you come in here and you're furious with Earl. No, I was in a happy mood. This, All this just heightened the simple frustrations I have from time to time with Earl, who talks or who doesn't think I exist. He doesn't Do you listen. understand that he's the executive producer? Yes, I do. You can't be screaming at him. And getting him upset. Here's the thing. When I say, here's the perfect example. I say, you know, the phones blew up. Maybe play, play the song. Or the phones blew up. Play the song. Did the, you read, phones Dave, play up. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Dave, did you realize that we were probably about 30 seconds away from going into a break? When? When you screamed at me? Because I'm looking at the clock. You can't I noticed play the, the song into a break. Exactly. We were 30 is, seconds which, from a break. It was. Which, no, but uh, again. What, me listening to the show, knowing where we are in the show, 
I the guest that just you've got to be up. aware all the time. Though. I have to be aware. Where all, he does it, he gets to live his life like a child. No, that but, uh, but the the first but, phones blew out twelve fifteen, no song. Uh, twelve twenty five, no song. Twelve thirty, this is my problem. And every time I told him, he nothing happened. And then he says, "Well, Dave, you screamed because it seems like I have to." And that's uh, why I screamed because my voice. Because every here's the other thing. My problem, my biggest problem with Dave is sometimes he he talks without really thinking about what he's going True. to say, and yeah, I always and that's I a always genetic to, thing. I mean, and I always try to tell him, yeah, like sometimes can. you have to think before you speak. Earl, right? are you ignoring him or just not listening to him? No. And every Same once thing. in a while, he's like, Earl, you talk, can you hear me? And I go, Yes, I'm listening to you, Dave. All right, here's Jerry wants to add something. Jerry, you're on first. Yeah, hey, uh, Ron, didn't when the first song first come out, you told Earl to interrupt with the song to let the guys in Washington know the phone's blowing up? I did do that, and not only to let the guys in Washington know, it's that to let me and Fez know, all right, um, keep this conversation going, because people are trying to join in the conversation, but so many people have called that the phone banks go out. Now, this should have been also fixed by now, Earl. Yes, and it's been brought up more than once, and we were actually told that it's been fixed. Right. So and it, it obviously hasn't, but Earl, I didn't get, you know, until the song first played, I didn't know that the phones had blown up, and I didn't get any signal in my headphones either. Yeah, but sometimes, like right before I'll hit the song, the song, the phones will pop up, and that happened more than once. But they still blew out. They still blew out. So, and then they all come back in, and it seems like, well, what's going on? Why, why aren't the names up? How come it's all busy, but there's no names on their screen? It's because the phones blew out. You have to, you know, let them know that. No, and I why don't you throw a hand signal at me, Dave? Okay, I'm glad to do that. All right, what's going to be the all right, that'll be... The X, like the old uh, X-Pac-like thing okay. that he used to do in WWE. That means that no matter, even though it looks like we got a full bank of phones, you can't write them up because you can't get to them. That's what that means. No, no, what I'm saying is as soon as, as they go... But, yeah. I mean, that's what you're, you're blaming on Earl, that I looked up, I saw a full bank of phones, but you weren't answering any of them. I was doing them as fast as I could, but they... But they, that's not the same thing as the phones blowing up. No, they, they, they did blow up. up. That's not No, because they blew up, and then they all... If nine lines come, by, come back on at the same time, it's humanly impossible. You can't speak to nine different people and get their names. Sure you can. Billy could. To nine? Yes. He would move like a bat out of hell, and he would go, go, go for Here's uh, Russell. You're a man of fez. This is the second producer. Now, I'm a, I'm a black girl fan, mm -hmm. okay? But this is the second producer who seems to have the same exact complaints about Earl as the terrorist. Am I wrong in saying that? Well, what he is saying is exactly what Harry used to uh, claim, Earl. And Harry said that shit used to roll downhill, and he was always in trouble with stuff that you had done. And now Dave is telling us the same thing. Well, I have probably taken more bullets under Dave than I ever did with Harry. I'll be the first to admit that. What bullet have you taken for him? Well, when he, well that, that little thing where he kind of spoke out of turn. Right. I had to hear about it. Like, why can't I have a, a grasp on my guy? Why, I mean, you know, he's my responsibility. I'm the executive producer. And, True. And, and Did you ever thank him for that? For covering for you? I Dave, didn't even know about it. We all covered for you. I, I, I told said, you. I said thanks. Yeah, but now you're mad at Earl for it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not mad at Earl. He doesn't communicate with me at all, Ron. That's a perfect example. How the hell? I mean, how how, how am I supposed to know about any of these? Earl, things? why won't you talk, talk to me? Dave? For fuck's sake! When he when he comes in in the morning, I go like this every fucking morning. I go, "Hey, Earl, what's up?" The same type of treatment that I give to Ron Bennington and to Fez Watley. You know what Earl does to me? What? That's it. Nothing. Silence. No. That's, that's what I was trying wait, to communicate. Well, hold on. He doesn't hold say on. hello back. Oh, and wait, wait, and wait. if but if if. There, Ron or Fez say hi to Earl. Earl lights up like a fucking jack o' lantern. He helps. Hey, <laughs> he helps take my jacket off me. No, but one and time I said, don't give me the same no, response. Time Every said, morning we do the jacket off dance, which no, I love. One time I said hi. He goes, you didn't. No, I, th I think I said a hello. And he goes, you didn't say hi. I went, I said hello. No, he did. That's thing. total bullshit. You did. You don't. You don't speak up and you don't say hi. All right, here's Earl Douglas fan. Earl Douglas fan, you're on Ron and Fez. Earl Douglas fan since day one. Earl Douglas fan since day one. Fuck Dave. Okay. Thank you, sir. He made a good point. <laughs> <laughs> that part, actually, 
I found somewhat interesting. Well, I don't know. I think one of them has to go, Fess. And I'm keeping Earl for Team Bennington. Well, I want to keep Dave for Team uh, Why? Wally. You honestly feel like we need Dave? Yes. Thank Have you me. seen his work? Yeah. You know the feedback that I get on Dave. Right. Thank you, Fess. But I think Dave can improve, and I think Dave is worth keeping. Do you Thank believe you. this, Earl? Dave can improve. No, I think anybody can improve, quite honestly. Enough to be passable? Yes, I, I think... I, I, You're I, honestly going to sit here and say to me, face to face, you think that Dave McDonald is going to make an adequate employee for XM? No, I, be truthful. No, I, I think... Don't be politically correct. No, I'm, Adequate, I'm saying. <laughs> adequate, <laughs> adequate, I'm not sure, but I mean, my, my biggest... I guess my biggest problem with Dave is I'm like, and again, I'm like, sometimes he has skin to, color. No, <laughs> sometimes he has to think before he speaks, and some you got to really be careful about what you say and who you say it to. Yeah, well, he don't mind running you down. I'll listen that's, to what you say, Earl. That no, I'm not saying listen to what I say. I'm just saying sometimes you have to really be careful, like what you say in front of people, in front of certain people. That's all. Okay. I got the point. Dave, I just want you to know, in my opinion, you're fired already. I just don't see it. Wow. Right now, Fez has got you. I know this morning when I needed something for the show, I couldn't get Earl on the phone, but I could get a hold of Dave. Well, uh, Earl's taking a train. So am I. I just take my train earlier because oh, I arrive Oh, let me earlier. ask you this. Uh, and you guys want to get a hold of Earl at night? Call this fucking place 11 o'clock at night. Six, seven hours after both of you guys have left. Because he watches Million Dollar Baby for three hours. That's a good chunk of time. So you're telling me Earl doesn't work. I, this, is I your know, fucking, I, this is your adequate guy. He's fucking raping. I know he works a, a lot. Yeah. A lot. But he, if he wanted to, uh, uh, he could have gotten home. Uh, he, he, he could go home at a reasonable hour if he wants. But there's Central what, Park photography. Well, what there's day? little naps. What there's little cat naps in the booth. And we have the photography to prove it. Hey, hey Dave, let me ask you this question. You know what time that John Moore interview kind of, felt, kind of went through? What time did it what? go through? Uh, what time did the booking go through? What time did the booking go through? It went through, I believe, around 6.15. An hour and a half after... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I take that back. Two hours after you left. Unbelievable. That's just totally untrue. Unbelievable. And you brag about getting here early. Sometimes bookings happen. Sometimes I have to deal with the West Earl, Coast. I Earl, have to, I, why can't you book from your house? Why should he? This why is a place to work. But see, just because people go home doesn't mean they're not doing work. It's retarded to think like that. Every time I go home, oh, another early day for Eastside. Who says no, that? No, I have a fucking Who life. Who says that? Earl. So he doesn't single. say hello to you, but he makes sure he always says goodbye. Oh, he makes me feel like a, a little grape uh, every single <laughs> Wait, time that, that I leave. He makes you feel like a what? A little tiny grape that, uh, you know, because dare I leave it at 6 o'clock p.m. when I'm also here... An hour, two hours before he arrives. No one forgets that. I get here at 9 o'clock and Earl. And 11.15. And, uh, and do what? And do what? Uh, we have a lot of audio today. Did they get on the air? Could we play some audio today? I mean, if I, we do, I'm going to sit here and judge it. I'm going to judge it. Play the James Brown drunk audio. That would be great for the fans and the listeners at home to hear the Godfather of Soul on a talk show. But I mean, but you know what? I think I have heard that on O and A. No, I never heard that. That's when I enjoyed it. Hey, why don't you do this, Fez? Have your guy just plant a bunch of O and A clips. That's not what his job is. That's not what he'll be doing. That's what he's setting up for us. Well, besides that. Uh... Look, we have just a different outlook on life. I mean, yeah, yeah Earl I, likes original material. I don't. All right, here's something that Dave has ready for the show. Harry is a lion sack of cunt. Perfect, Dave. You've done a wonderful job. Yeah, well, I don't think. I don't know. Maybe that was one of the clips I found. I don't know. Maybe it was. <laughs> now look at him. He's suffering. That's not your clip. Fez firing. 
fire him. I'm not going to fire him. And then Robert. I'll give Earl the raise that he deserves. <laughs> I just want you, when you give him the raise, spend a little uh, portion of the money on Earl Surveillance, and then you'll see why he's here till midnight. I don't have to do Earl Surveillance. I don't want to have to watch over him uh, 24 hours a day. I treat him like a man. I wish And Bill... if he needs a little time to take some photography, I don't care. He's getting things done. How about the million-dollar baby session? He brought me uh, Mr. Peter Rieger yesterday. <laughs> well, that guy's good. What's Million Dollar Baby? I want him to watch film. Earl, I hope you've seen a Million Dollar Baby. Yes, I've seen it once. One of Clint Eastwood's <laughs> best. Once in the producer's booth. Yeah, yeah, the monitor was on HBO during the show. You, what? You, oh, I, you just call him. He says he watches movies during the show. No, it was on during the show. Why? And I always have it on CNN. Why would you? If, if you had already, already, always have it on CNN, how did it magically get to Million Dollar Baby? Because Unbelievable. Because, because, because you no, like to watch dur TV during the no, show. During right. commercial breaks, I flip to Fox. I flip to CNN Headline News. I flip around to you see what to, is going on. You flip to Saturday Night Live, too, don't you? All right, I've gotten, uh, and I'm bored with this whole thing. Fine. So we're going to move on. Fez, would you fire him? No. <laughs> I am not firing Eastside Dave. Then can you make him adequate? Yes. You have 24 hours. Oh, man. Thank you, Mr. W. I mean passable. I don't mean good. I know. I mean literally passable. Where he starts figuring out what he's saying as he's saying it. And he doesn't screw up his words. I'll get there for you. That would be perfect. And the thing Earl's mad at you about today, you were doing the right thing, Eastside Dave. What's that? Trying to get the uh, Perinoid song on the air when the phones blow up. First of all, the right thing to do is to follow your executive producer and then come in here during the break and explain to us. But I don't ever need to look over there and see a screaming match during the show. So if if you tell him once and he doesn't want to go to it, that's where it goes. I don't want this show interrupted. Okay. You know where the door is, right? Yep. You're welcome in here. Every time that you want to bring me a clip of the ONA show, something that you feel like you've written. Oh, I've written a great thing. It's Anthony talking. <laughs> All right. You don't think I'm familiar with Willie Mays, my friend? I know. A you baseball know. historian. Number 24. Who? Uh, Sean, you're on a fez. Hey, buddies. I miss uh, pre-Dave Ron and Fez. Just want to tell you guys, there's one... Wait a minute. Uh, Let me just uh, get this straight from you. You actually miss Harry. I <laughs> I would take Harry over Dave any day. You thought the show was going better with Harry? It was definitely more entertaining with Harry there than with Dave, but I'd rather have neither one of them. I'd rather it just be the three of you guys. Thanks. Hey, Ron no and problem. Fez. Yes, and Earl. Don't leave out Earl. Well, he's the end. Yeah. Hey, I got one for you. Literally. Uh, I never was really religious, we but this is the one that this. actually started we putting the fear of the devil in me. Shine a spotlight on it and now make it seem awful. Ron and Fizz, <laughs> XM202.